What's up ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden here. So I've been getting some questions around tutorials and articles online about the different types of JavaScript functions. There's basically three. There's the one that has the function keyword, there's the anonymous one, and then there is the weird function closure thing, which is kind of like anonymous. And then there's the fat arrow that's been getting a lot of press. So I wanted to explain the differences between the three, but really the two, because the fat arrow is kind of what everyone's using right now. And you'll see it a lot in articles. So I wanna show you the differences and show you why I use it a lot. And hopefully when people ask you what is the difference and why do you use it, you'll now know. So let's, uh, let me explain it in code real quick. We're going to do this in Node. So I'm going to open the terminal. And if you don't know what Node is, you can go download it here. Go to Node.js, type it in Google. You'll see Node.js and whatever the most current one is, get that one. Because it's the most fun, but fun here. Now if you don't know what NVM is, it allows you to switch your Node version. So we're going to type in NVM here. And you'll notice that it is a program installed on my machine. If you don't know what NVM is, it allows you to switch node versions, node version manager, NVM. So type in NVM for short. The instructions are extremely complicated. You swim through the wall of text and land, if you're on a Mac, right here. And then step two is this. Now, if you're on a PC, I have no idea. There's instructions somewhere in here to help you. So I'm gonna make sure I have what I need. NVM LS gives me version 7.2, which is good enough. As long as it's not old school four or five, which doesn't exist. So we'll CD to a directory. In this case, I'm going to CD to my documents and I'm going to make a directory called functions. Yo. We'll CD to our functions, yo directory. Inside of our directory, there is nothing. So we're going to create some stuff. So I'm going to use code for this. Open the functions, yo directory. I'm going to close this little file explorer here. And we're going to create a new file, save it as index.js, and we're going to code some node. Same thing as JavaScript. A basic function here, when we get a basic function, it has the function keyword here. It has a name that it is, the parentheses, which kind of like howls an argument. So you see they kind of grab things, and here is where you put your arguments. And then you have a start and end with these squiggly braces. So anything inside of here is what the function is going to do. So we'll take a sum, we'll do a one plus one, and we'll do a console.log to show it is out. And now when we call this function, we can run this by going node index or index.js. You can do either one. Now you'll notice it says sum of two. So it prints out sum of two. So far, so good. You'll notice, though, that I called this function after it. One nice thing about these functions is that they're defined at parse time or compile time. So when JavaScript looks at your file and says, did you write it correctly? These functions are defined there. So you can actually call them before they're even defined because they're already kind of like in the machine code or the RAM ready for you to go. So we can call this function way up here on line two, even though it's defined way down here. Now watch what happens when we run it. Same thing, so far so good. Okay, so it doesn't matter where we invoke it from. Watch what happens when we convert this to an anonymous function. So we'll say var basic function equals a function with the name, put a semicolon at the end to be nice. And we'll put this down here like we had it before, run it. So far, so good, it's the same. This function is assigned to this variable. So instead of doing it, we can pass this around as a normal variable. That's cool, but we can treat it as a normal function and call it. Well, what happens when we move this guy up here again and then run it? Boom, it fails because it says it's not defined. So these anonymous functions are defined when you set the variable. Now these problems tend to go away once you start using anonymous functions within anonymous functions. So you define another one in here, and then these problems kind of go away. So you don't have to really about worry about it too much, and that's okay. That's one bad thing about using anonymous functions when you have this function. The second thing is because of this forward referencing, you can put this code anywhere and not care at all where it's at which is really nice if you're dealing with your code or you're sharing code with others, that they don't really have to worry. Often see, let me redo that real quick. You'll often see these defined as something called function expressions, and that's okay too. So anonymous functions, whatever. But each one of these can still be treated in an object-oriented fashion. So for example, we'll have a person with a name, and we'll say this.name equals name. And this, this keyword is magical. It basically is a uh, reserve keyword meaning whatever you create instance wise of this it will refer to this instance so if you create 31 of these each unique instance of this will have its own unique name so for example we go var jesse equals new person 
give him a name of me. And var albus equals new person. He's really a dog, but whatever. Albus. And I don't mean like a person, like, what's up, dog? I mean, like, real dog. So person albus. And we log both of these out. We'll do the comma instead of the plus because node in the browser, if you put a comma here with objects, will print them out to the best of its ability. In the browsers, you can actually inspect it. In node, not so much. That's okay. We'll run that guy, give it a spin. And as you can see, it's got a person here with a name of Jesse and a person here with a name of Alice. So each one of these is a person kind of class, so to speak, or instance of a person class, and they have unique data. So this, this refers to them. So anonymous functions work very much the same. So we'll say person equals function. And all we did was change the definition to a function expression and having it defined way up here to make sure that none of these things break. So we'll save the code, run it again. And as you can see, it works just the same. This function's just the same. So far, so good. Watch what happens when we do the arrow function. So we delete the function keyword, and we add this fat arrow to the right. So function goes away, fat arrow to the right. That's equals and the greater than symbol. Once you do this, the this is gone. So anonymous functions or function expressions and normally declared functions, this, which is also known as a function declaration, these all have their own this, but arrow functions do not. They actually do a very special behavior with this. They will go up a level of what they're defined in, so this will report to node. So let's, let me show you an example. When we use the arrow function and run it, it actually doesn't work for a couple reasons. You also can't new or create a new instance of an arrow function because it has no this, it basically is using whatever this it's defined in. So let's get rid, get rid of this, quote unquote. And what we'll do is we'll define a function declaration as normal. And let's go back to what our prototype example, where we say, say hi. So we'll say person prototype. This just means add a method so that any person that's created can also use this method. And it, Back in the old days, it used to save on RAM. People got really obsessed with prototype, kind of acting like class methods, but it didn't really. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I don't really care. I just want to show you how it works. So we're going to use a anonymous function and have no parameters. But notice we're going to say console.log by name is this.name. And in this case, we can do a plus because it's a string. And we know it's going to look all party. So now when we go var jesse equals new person, then we do albus as a new person. Now in this case, we can say jesse say name, albus say name. Clear the console with apple k, or command k, sorry, I say apple a lot. Node index, and as you can see, my name is Apis. So this still works just the same, but watch what happens when we take say name. We're going to dissect this here, do some surgery. And then we say say name as a fat arrow function. So remember before, fat arrow didn't have a this, right? It had no this. So what is this going to refer to? This is going to refer to the person it's in. So we're going to rerun the code. And it still works as normal. So there is no this on these functions. Now, you oop heads are probably saying, why did you put a function on every single instance? You're copying say name. You could have put it on the prototype and made it more. And that's fine. I'm not an oop guy anymore, but it, the point is illustrated that you have the this in there. If you're an oop programmer, it doesn't seem very useful, right? If you're a functional programmer, it's great because you don't have to worry about this and scope and all these other things. All right, so the last thing I want to point out is that arrow functions allow you to define a very special syntax. So let's return some values. We'll get sum of a and b, and we'll return a plus b. So normal math here. The result is get sum of 1 plus 2, which is 3. We'll console.log it out, and as you can see, it's normal math clear out the console, run it, and we get a result of three. So far, so good. Same thing for anonymous functions here. We go var, just to be a little bit more clear. 
works the exact same, except this no longer can be forward referenced. However, as a variable, it can be passed around as a higher order function and people can reference it, which is kind of cool. Let's do something even cooler and get rid of this, convert it to a fat arrow function. And notice that it works about the same, right? Result of three. But watch this. With fat arrow functions, if you only have one line of code, it does an implicit return. So we'll get rid of the squiggly braces. We'll get rid of this. And notice that we just have the semicolon here and no return statement. So watch this. Runs, it works the exact same. So fat arrow functions are kind of nice like that. You don't have to do that. And if I hard code a default value here, we'll call this function get test string. And it takes no parameters. And so we're not going to give it any parameters. When we print it out, it gets a result of test. So it's basically a constant. You'll notice that we have no parameters, but we still define the parentheses of where the parameters go. There are some tutorials out there that actually get rid of that. So you can actually get rid of that when you pass it in as a callback. So for example, here you can't, but if I go into a basic callback, and I'm going to say, you're going to give me a function, okay? And I'm going to call that function with the O. So whatever you give me, I'm going to call it with the O. So let's call basic function. And this is what people often do with fat arrow functions, is that they define them inline. And they got really popular because inline functions are used in jQuery and all kinds of callback handlers. And they're a lot more terse in, in terms of syntax. So instead of going function, right, like that, it's a little bit smaller. And as you start to nest these, they even, even get more smaller. Some could argue completely unreadable. <laughs> the list people seem to be fine. I don't know what the Haskell people. So we'll go to console.log and show that we got some kind of function back. So the result that it's giving me, this yo, is the result. He said, whatever he said, we're going to print out. So we'll run it. So I pass this fat arrow function here in line to this guy. And he says, all right, whatever this you pass me, I'm going to call it like a function pass it a parameter, and I print it out right here. So you'll see some people do this. They'll actually delete the parentheses, and they can get away with it because it's kind of housed in another function or a function argument. See these parentheses? They kind of make it safe. So you can say, well, hey, we already know you're in here. You don't need to provide them again. I know it's strange, but it works. So even in Node, you're still allowed to do it. It's not just a Webpack thing in the browser. So that's why a lot of people do this sometimes. But again, if you have no parameters, right, you, you can't really get away with it. So if you have no parameters, it's encouraged to do at least blank. That is the basics of the arrow function. That is what she's used for. And that is one of the cool tricks that she has. So again, the this doesn't exist. And it's a lot more terse, right? So you, you just have that arrow function there. It's a lot more terse. And lastly, it has the ability to return a value. So we'll say, show me the money. And if you just put a value here, like that, then you can console.log and show that it's returning the value when you print it out. So see how I call it right there? Without having to use the return keyword, it's a nice little shortcut. And it's right there. Now, it still follows all the same rules of closures and everything else, okay? So when people talk about closures, it's, it's still following all those rules. It's just the, the this property goes away. You stop caring about things like prototype and things like that. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about, which will take 30 seconds, is that I use var, but you can use let. You'll see tons of people using const, and that's okay. Again, this is a variable. So even though we're talking about fat arrow function, this guy, at the end of the day, it's an anonymous function or anonymous variable or anonymous expression, whatever, that is assigned to a variable. So however you treat variables with var, let, or const, I don't care, or just globals. <laughs> you can do that too. That's how it works. Now I want to point out that the main reason most people like it is it's terse style. It's really small when you start nesting many, many callbacks in Node, or you start doing functional programming chains, or RxJS, or all these other functional libraries which have a lot of nested functions and callbacks, event handlers, and things like that. 
whether you're parsing JSON on the server or you're doing some GUI work, that terse syntax helps make your code a lot more readable. And the ability to define inline returns, if you start creating a lot of predicate functions in JavaScript, allows nicely small readable code. So same functionality, but a lot less space. And the one of the scientific studies that I'm, I apologize that I have the link now shows that less code is actually a lot easier to maintain. And they used Ruby and C, I believe, in the study to prove it. So performance aside, less code is actually easier. So if you can read Federal functions, it took me about eight months to fill Zen and Com. It may take make you a lot shorter, and that's fine. But once you get reading it, it makes your programs a lot easier to read if you're not doing basic oop stuff. If you are doing oop stuff and you actually attach them to the prototype, that's fine too. But again, the, the, this goes away. So hopefully that gives you an understanding when people say, what are fat arrow functions? Why should I use them? Now you know.